This is a ramping up your English book review. Are you looking for outstanding photography and a way to strengthen your English vocabulary? You'll have both in Seymour Simon's Book of Trains from HarperCollins Publishers. Each time you turn a page in this book, you're treated to world-class photography. One page features a train switching yard in Portland, Oregon. Most pages have written information about the picture you're enjoying and about trains in general. You'll encounter the precise vocabulary of train terminology. You'll also encounter language forms like present tense verbs and prepositional phrases. You'll see how objects are used to describe things by listing their parts. Mostly, though, you'll enjoy learning more about trains and about the various cars on the train. You're also likely to find the reading level understandable. Seymour Simon's Book of Trains is a beautiful book that offers an enjoyable way to learn more about trains. You'll have to get your own copy. I'm too attached to mine. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English a support program for intermediate level English learners. You can watch and download this program and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on Channel 15 in Ashland and Channel 182 on Charter Cable. This is Episode 12, Segment 2. In the video clip about the Coast Starlight, the statement was made that if we had been on schedule, we wouldn't have seen the sunset in the Pacific Ocean. This is an example of an if-then statement, also known as a conditional verb tense. Since this communicates a condition that's not present, this is an example of subjunctive mood as well. So we use the verb phrase had been in the first part of the sentence. Let's take a look at this. Then we use the conditional form of the verb will with the verb phrase have seen. We make this part of the sentence negative by using the contraction for would not. The second part of the sentence, finish this hypothetical thought, the second statement is dependent on the first clause in order to make sense. Together they make a conditional statement since the relationship describes something that never happened, we weren't on schedule, and we did see the sunset. This is an example of subjunctive mood. It's also known as an if-then statement. Although this is an if-then statement, these words come in pairs and appear in separate clauses. We often drop the word then as we did in the first example. You could say, if we had been on schedule, then we wouldn't have seen the sun set in the Pacific Ocean. This is a perfectly correct way to communicate this subjunctive idea. Just be aware that the word then is often dropped in English the way we use it in the United States. Both would be considered correct. We could avoid the subjunctive altogether by making a cause and effect statement. Since the train was behind schedule, we saw a sunset in the Pacific Ocean, but this establishes a different feel or mood. That's why the subjunctive is stated as subjunctive mood. The difference is subtle, but things get that way when you ramp up your language to a higher level. Now, if all this talk about subjunctive mood makes your head hurt, then you should know that we're done with this idea, and we're going to dig into some vocabulary work real soon. That's it for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this. This is a ramping up your English book review. If you want to go back in time to the very birth of trains and railroads, you want to read the book The History of Railways by Colin Heinsohn from Scholastic Books. The book's format reminds me of eyewitness books with small illustrations and ample text. English learners will find that the text is very challenging and there's a lot of text on each page. The illustrations are clear, providing the context to help readers decipher the text. Historical photos depict important events like the Golden Spike Ceremony 
that joined the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific Railroads as America's first intercontinental railroad. There's a great amount of information in the history of railways. Readers will stretch their English reading skills, but you'll also be re rewarded by a deeper knowledge of trains and railroads. Meanwhile, you'll be ramping up your English proficiency, especially in reading. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.